there's a really strong feeling and sense when you're in the house of being in a private sanctuary. And part of that is the light and the gardens and the outlooks are all really protected and focused. My name is Piers Kay. I'm an architect and this is my own home, the Skelton Studio House. The house is located in Belmont on the North Shore in Auckland and it's in a quiet residential area. It was built in 1954 for a couple and a young child. When we first looked at the house, we didn't realise that it was an original group architect's house. But we could tell it was of that era. It had been altered quite a bit. The garden was really overgrown, but a really big part of the house. And a lot of the native timbers and kind of exposed surfaces were still really intact. So while a lot of the windows were removed and a lot of the natural light was taken out, you could see it had really strong bones and it needed just an edit to kind of bring it back to what it used to be. The brief we gave ourselves was to respect the original house. We really loved it. And for a while we thought we would keep it pure and, and never change it. But we decided at some point to make the spaces slightly more usable for us and slightly bigger. In terms of the layout, you arrive from the street and encounter the new extension, which is massed as a long, low rectangle to the street. And as you move around the side, courtyards start to open up and eventually you arrive at the main courtyard in the existing house. Once inside is the open living and dining spaces and studio spaces. And then as you move around the space to the rear of the site, we have our bathroom that is set inside the plan and then it descends down into our bedroom. Within the existing house, it was quite clear about what to keep and what to edit and remove. A lot of it was restoration work, so we were restoring timbers that had been painted or restoring windows that had been removed. We were lucky enough that the original drawings were kept on archive at Auckland University that showed what it looked like when it was completed. So a lot of the work we did to the house was about understanding what it should look like, peeling back some of the layers that had been added to it and exposing it in its best light. In terms of our work, and our interventions, we pushed a new space out on the street side. It's a kind of offset 8 by 4 rectangle that connects to the back of our scullery and kitchen. Part of the work that we were interested in doing was creating a kitchen that had a sense of front of house and back of house. In order to achieve those spaces, we started talking to Fisher and Paykel about what appliances would work in those various zones. We knew we wanted cooking as part of our kitchen table and more living and open experience, but we wanted it to be very subtle. And so part of that was the way we designed the cabinetry that it sits into. They feel more like bits of furniture than kitchen cabinetry. They have plastered fronts and raw stone edges. And it was also the selection of the cooktop there's no overhead extraction, so it's quite visually clean, and it's all set flush within the stone and very discreet. For the scullery, it was all about really clever use of space and integration. Even though it's not front and centre within the house, we still wanted it to be really clean and visually really clean. It's a sports space, so visual clutter was something we wanted to avoid. And so working with Fisher and Paykel, all the appliances are really well integrated and covered with the same tone of cabinetry front that we use throughout the house. It's also a space where we have our laundry and we used a combined washing machine and drying machine to get the most spatially efficient layout we could. There's a lot of design freedom when using these appliances and the integration means that you can compose the spaces really as you want. Another thing that we were interested in doing was 
modernizing the bathroom. It was my wife and I living here by ourselves, and so we wanted a bathroom that felt like a sanctuary. I was interested in really tactile materials, natural materials, but I wanted the material palette to be very tonal, or as tonal as it could be, and so we put down new French oak floors, the new windows in the new part of the house are all cedar to match the original. There's a plaster colour in the paint and cabinetry surfaces. And then we chose a stone that's used throughout the kitchen and bathroom. It's the same stone that's really soft. It's almost concrete in texture and quite interested in that tonal consistency but with textural variation. What was really clear to us about the house originally was the amount of glass and the connection with the outside and the light that that enables. And so we worked with the landscape architect, Jared Lockhart, in designing the landscape. We wanted everything to be natives and seasonal colour and trees that blurred the boundaries. I think our favourite part about the project is the house's connection with the landscape and the light and the sense of being in a really calm and tranquil space 